Winfield, a candidate who is from this community, who understands its problems and its needs, and is ready, willing, and able to do something about them. Yeah! yeah here. Hey. Please, please, I thought I already had your votes. Well, you certainly do, and you're gonna make a great state's attorney. That's if I win. Don't worry, Brad, you'll win. Well, with people like you helping me out, I'm, I'm beginning to think so myself. Well, you know, we're doing it for ourselves, Brad. We need people like you in office. And it's part of our duty as citizens in a democracy. And it's fun, politics. <laughs> Well, I wish I could stay and help, but I have an interview downtown. Well, you go right ahead. We've got everything under control here. You go out and nail down a few more votes. We'll see you Friday night at my church for the telecast. Right. So long, everyone. Thanks again. Back and yeah. Bye. 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 Ah. All right. There's 500 ready to go. Excuse me, I'm going to get a glass of water. Phil, why don't you try a sponge? It's easier on the tongue. No, I'll be fine. Just let me moisten up. Where's your grandson, Keith? I never see him anymore. Well, Keith and his friend Maurice are playing jazz down at the Half Note Club. Really? Mm. What does Keith's father think about that? Well, not so happy, Frank. I guess my love for music has skipped a generation. You'd probably feel a lot better if Keith was a cop like him. Anything but a musician, especially a jazz musician. Playing jazz? Mm -hmm. What about your gospel music? Well, Keith still plays for the choir, Marie. But don't forget, jazz is also a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hey, Guess who, and get it right the first time. Maurice, you're high. No, baby, now look, didn't I promise you? Yes, about 20 times. Oh. Come on, get out of here. Good evening. As you probably noticed, the Johnson Trio is short one man. And if he doesn't show in the next five minutes, well, we'll kindly refund one third of your money. <laughs> Maurice, I'm not kidding. Mr. Powell's got a poker game in here tonight. Who cares, Cherie? I care. I want to keep my job. And if you weren't so messed up, you want to keep yours, too. Honey, I love you. Not as much as you love drugs. You listen to me. What? Get in here and shut up. I'm all finished, Mr. Powell, if you need anything. Yeah. Drink? No, thanks. You know what? You know when, you know how. What's there left to discuss? How much? This hit is risky, Mr. Powell. Risky means expensive. You'll have protection. I'm setting it up tomorrow night at Chris's Taylor's. It's still tricky, Mr. Powell. You're right, Red. This is tricky. And we wouldn't want any mistakes. 
I'll give you 25000 in a month in Miami, including a female companion. How's that sound? Fair. Good. I took care of your problem, now you take care of mine. It's as good as done. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you can forget your refund. You're gonna have to settle for some good old down home jazz. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry we won't be going any further this evening. Thank you. Out of here. What the hell do you think you're doing? Come on, man. Don't get crazy on me. Oh, I am crazy. Putting up with you. I'm not doing nothing. You're loaded. <laughs> After my grandfather pulled strings to get you into rehab. After you promised to stay straight. How could you do this to the people who cared about you the most? Huh? Huh? Look, man, leave me alone. No, I won't leave you alone. Here? Hi, Dad. Book him. Marie? Oh, I've got terrible news. Keith Johnson has been arrested for murder. Keith Johnson? Well, that's impossible. Where is he? Down to the Cook County Jail. Steve's there already. She's with Keith's grandfather. Frank, Keith has been arrested for the murder of Maurice Donnell. Maurice was his best friend. I know. Well, then, I wish you'd all called me. I could have saved you the trouble of coming all the way down here.
Can I see him? No, it's uh, against the department rules. Keith has to go through the same process as everyone else. Peter, he's your son. Not today, he isn't. Disappointed that you're not backing me for re-election. Oops. Maybe I'm in the wrong place to ask a favor of the state's attorney. <laughs> My wife wouldn't speak to me if I let you go anywhere else. Please, sit. Thanks. Marcia likes St. Pat's, but St. Michael's will always be home to her. What's the favor? There's a young man, Keith Johnson. He's been accused of murder. I'm certain he didn't do it. But, uh... If you could see your way clear to arrange for a bail that his family could afford. You know him and you believe he's innocent? Absolutely. That's good enough for me. I'll instruct my deputy not to object to a low bail. I really appreciate this, Michael. Oh, and tell Marcia to come by. We miss her. I will. Good luck. Thanks. Nice of the state's attorney to agree to low bail. You're lucky Father Dowling interceded for you. He's not lucky. He's innocent. Excuse me. Well, are you uh, going back to the Parsons? Uh, Peter doesn't want Keith staying with me. He thinks I'm not a strong disciplinarian. He said Granddad will do whatever I say. He's just mad because Granddad likes my music. <laughs> well. I'm not staying with my father, that's for sure. Keith, why don't you come back to the rectory with me for the time being, huh? Hey, that's a great idea, Frank. No one could object to that. Thank you, Father. Oh, Keith! Oh, it's been a long time. It sure has. You still playing the piano? Sure am. You still singing the blues? You bet. <laughs> hey, Father, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Father Prestwick is here. Are you planning any more unexpected guests for lunch? What's your problem? Well, you're in luck. I'm making a lamb stew, so all I have to do is cut up two more potatoes and throw them in. But if this was whitefish day, there'd only be three pieces, and you'd be in bad trouble. God bless God, lamb stew. Yeah, well. Marie, you sing the blues? Sure, I'm Irish. <laughs> Frank. Young Keith has just been telling me about his latest travail. Mm -hmm. I think his staying here at the rectory is a splendid idea. As you know, one of my specialties is counseling troubled youth. I think I could make great progress with Keith. I know. I'll establish rapport with Keith through his music. Music? Duets. Frank, Keith, I'm not one to brag, but I do possess some small talent on the violin. Music is the language of the soul. We'll be pals in no time. Mm. Well, that's very nice of you, Phil, but, uh, you know what I think Keith needs is companionship. You know, a, a little friendly support. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. Mm. Uh, Phil, why don't you go in the kitchen and see what Marie is doing? I know what Marie's doing in the kitchen. She's making lunch. Phil, why don't we both go see what Marie is doing in the kitchen? Do you remember this day? <laughs> sure. It's the picnic our youth group threw for Senior Citizens Day. Yeah. And there's you with the piano for a change. <laughs> oh, look. There's Frank and Granddad eating blueberry pie. <laughs> wow. There's Maurice. Yeah. How could he get so messed up? He knew better. I thought he was different, you know? He thought he wouldn't get hooked, I guess. Could have been either one of us. Damn, Maurice, damn. I'm really gonna miss him. I don't know. Excuse me? I'm gonna say my first mass tomorrow for Maurice. Thank you, Father. 
Keith, is there anything you can tell me about the night of the murder? I went out back looking for Maurice, and I found him in the alley, and he was bleeding. He tried to say something to me, and uh, I could barely hear him. What did he say? Well, he, he whispered, uh, he said, Chris Taylor, tomorrow night. And then he died. mean anything to you, Keith? Oh, nothing at all. Did you tell your father about this? My father's not interested in anything I got to say. I know that it seems like your father is hard on people sometimes, but he's harder on himself than anyone else. No, he just never gives me a break. I'm his son, for God's sake. He should know I would never kill anybody. I'm sure that deep down he knows that. Oh, no. All he cares about is being a cop. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, I had a long night, and I didn't get much sleep. If you guys don't mind, I, I would... Oh, like... no, 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 no. You go on up and get some rest. It's the first door on the right. Thank you, Father. I'll see you guys in an hour or so. Sleep well. Yeah. Maurice said, Chris Taylor, tomorrow night. That's tonight. Let's break out the phone books. Uh, Chris, Taylor? Chris Taylor? Yeah, Gordon Powell asked me to call you. How long ago? No, not Gordy Howe, oh, Gordon Powell. Mm -hmm. Oh, you never Gordon heard of me either. Okay, I, don't need to I must have the wrong number. Yeah, I'm sorry. Too. Thanks, bye. Well, I'm out of Chris Taylor's. Me too. Sister? Hi. Well, Marie tells me Keith's gone to bed. Poor kid, he must be exhausted. Maurice gave Keith a name, Chris Taylor, but we're having no luck at all tracking him down. It's a place. Chris Taylor's. It's a tailoring shop. It's owned by Gordon Powell. That's it, Frank. It had better be. We gotta go see Lieutenant Johnson. Come on. You mean to say you can't investigate the last words of a dying man? Not unless I'm sure what they mean, and I'm not. Neither are you, Frank. I can't go charging into a private business without probable cause. And words that could be the name of a person or a business do not give me probable cause. I really believe there's something in this, Peter. Wish I did. Believe me, Frank, I'd give a lot for a lead that would prove Keith innocent. He is innocent, Peter. And don't you give up hope. I'll try not to, Frank. Mmm, just delicious, Marie. <laughs> Plain old apple pie, make it all the time. Did you say you were brought up around here? 54th and Garfield Boulevard. I was born at 59th and Halstead. Five blocks away. There used to be a Balaban and Cat Theater right near there. Oh, every Saturday a double feature, cartoons and a cereal, all for a dime. And every Wednesday they gave away dishes. My mother and I were always there. You know, I'll bet we were in that theater together a hundred times and never even met. Well, I'm glad we finally did. Yeah, so am I. Frank, listen. Later, Phil. Steve, here, let me get you some pie. Oh, no thanks, Maria. We haven't got time. Oh. Raymond, where exactly is Chris Taylor's? Uh, 35th in California. Can you tell me something about the layout? Well, it's got a back room that used to be a bookie joint. You play cards. But why? Thanks. We'll see you later, Steve. Apple pie to go.
<clears throat> I wish I had a nickel for every time they've done that. You're a patient woman, Marie. I try to be, Reverend. <laughs> it's Raymond. Oh. Raymond, would you like another piece of pie? What a surprise. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got big trouble with the state's attorney's race. I'm telling you, our candidate is going to lose. So what are we going to do about it? That's why I asked you all to come here. I want your permission to authorize a hit. That's a big move. This guy's got friends. Hey, what? Do I look stupid? This guy's no good for us. He won't cooperate, so I say we blow him away. I'll take care of all the details. I don't need to remind you that if we don't have a man in office, we're in big trouble. All in favor? Running for office. We're gonna be first if we don't get out of here. Come on. So they're going to murder a political candidate. Are you sure you heard right? We don't know who it is or when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. And the target could be any one of a dozen people. Excuse me. I better get on this right now. Lucy, tell Chief Fox that I'll be in his office in half an hour and get me the mayor. No, Lucy, clear my schedule. I think this is more important than a political speech. He sure didn't waste any time. Michael never does. Besides, he could be Powell's target. So could Brad. Father Dollar. Brad, I was going to call you. Steve and I found out that Gordon Powell is planning to assassinate a political candidate. You and Steve found out? Well, we happened to overhear him planning a hit. He should know better than to try something like that. I guess he's changed. You know Gordon Powell? We went to school together. Gordon is smart, Father. That makes him dangerous. I've been investigating him for some time now, and I'm going to do something about him. But until then, please, just keep it to yourself. The man doesn't respect the collar or the habit. I'm running late again. See you tonight? Bye, Brad. Why should we keep this to ourselves? I don't know. Come on, let's go home. Mm. Wonderful meal, Marie. Thank you. Shall we? Well, I'm ready. 
Thank you once again, Marie. Mm -hmm. A little uh, prey lunch music, Marie. How can I thank you? <laughs> it's really nice of Father Prestrick to spend some time with Keith. And it's especially nice of you to invite me to lunch. Did you enjoy it? Yes. It's really amazing. You prepared all my favorite things. Coincidence. <laughs> Not really. I asked Keith what you liked. <laughs> it's very thoughtful of you. You know, I must admit that since my wife died, I haven't paid too much attention to what I've been eating. You know, I really enjoy cooking for Father Dowling and Steve, but when I'm by myself, I just open a jar of applesauce. <laughs> my specialty is canned tuna with crackers. <laughs> you know, people our age shouldn't be alone, Marie. I know. But it's hard for people our age to find a companion. Who'd put up with me? <laughs> oh, any man with sense should be honored. That button's loose. Take off your jacket. I'll sew it for you. Only if you let me help you with the dishes. That's a deal. <sighs> Father Dowling, I am so glad you're here. I think we're ready for an audience, don't you? Uh, yeah, if they're ready for us. Keith, could I see you in here for a moment, please? <laughs> No, we were just about to get started. Well, this will just take a minute, Phil. I do want some tea. Oh, I'd love some. Remember the band concerts I used to put on in Grant Park? They still do, every Sunday afternoon. You're kidding. No, I'm not. You care to go this Sunday? I'll pack a picnic. Oh, hi, Steve. We're just washing dishes. Don't let me interrupt. I'm just getting Father Dowling some tea. Just made a fresh pot. You and Reverend Johnson seem to be having a good time. Yeah, he's a wonderful man. Your theme song. Oh, go on. We overheard Powell making arrangements to hit a political candidate. Now, I just wish we could get into his club, because maybe we could find out who, when, and where. Why don't you leave that to me, Frank? Steve. Well, why not go on as the audience? No, can't go in as an audience. Well, you see, we need to get backstage and snoop around. First time I was ever backstage was when I auditioned for the weekly talent trials. That's how I got the job. These auditions, are they open to anyone? Yeah, and you'd be amazed at the characters who come in. <laughs> they should call it No Talent Trials. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Frank. Frank, this is my nightmare. In my worst nightmare, I'm standing up in front of people and I'm singing. You sing in the choir. Yeah, but a choir is a group. There are a lot of other people singing with me. Frank and Yolanda. We're on. Steve, come on. Anybody out there? Just sing, honey. First aid bars or anything. Hit it. Sweet dreams till sunbeams find you. Sweet dreams that leave your worries behind you. But in your dreams, whatever they be, dream Thank you a very little much, John. dream of me.
Nice to meet you. Next, Jerry the Juggler. Excuse me. You lost? The stage is back that way. Are you Sherry? How'd you know my name? Keith Johnson described you were friends of his. So we're trying to help him. We don't think that he killed Maurice. I believe it. I don't know who did, but Keith was Maurice's friend. Were you here the night of the murder? Well, I had gone home by then, but before that, well, I'll show you. Then I saw Mr. Powell coming, and I shoved Maurice into this closet. Thanks, Sherry. You've been very helpful. You know, Maurice had a lot of talent. Smart about music, but dumb about drugs. Mm -hmm. I miss him. Mr. Powell's coming. He'll fire me for letting you in here. No, he won't. Come on, Frank. Can I set it up later? Yes, Mr. Bell. Nice. Later, you got a job to do. Get the rest when the job is finished. You be there and ready to go at 7.30. Pull the trigger at 8. You got it? Yeah. Look, just relax, Mr. Powell. I'll take care of business. Yeah, you do that. That girl, she belonged to you? You just leave her alone till this is finished. Oh, yeah. But at 8.30, baby, here I come. Look, I got an appointment. Yeah. this. Brad Winfield is in league with Gordon Powell. No wonder he wanted us to stay away. Oh, this is terrible. This means that the target's got to be State's Attorney Dalton. Can we stop them? We're gonna have to try. Come on. Michael, the assassination is happening tonight and the target is you. This all makes perfect sense, Father. At 8 o'clock tonight, I'll be giving a campaign speech at a political rally on the north side. There'd be hundreds of people there. An assassin can just blend right in. Can't you just arrest Gordon Powell? Arrest him for what? He hasn't done anything yet. Well, then you have to cancel the speech. I owe it to my constituents and to my campaign workers to be there. But I will double my security. There's something else. I hate to say it, but I'm afraid Brad Winfield is involved in this. Brad? <laughs> I can't believe that. I mean, I know how ambitious he is, how determined to win, but are you 100% sure? Look, we saw Brad Winfield with Gordon Powell right after he set up the hit. Thank you for telling me. Now, if you'll excuse me. Of course. Come on, Steve. Be careful. Lucy, get me security.
Oh, there you are. I didn't think you were coming, so Raymond's picking me up. Where's Keith? Oh, he's at the church already. He's helping him set up everything. I made cookies for the choir and for all the television people. I get it. I certainly hope they like chocolate chip. Oh, and I got lemon drops and butterscotch. Oh. Shame on your father. You got eyes in the back of your head, Marie. And don't you forget it. Right? Raymond. Marie, we better get going. I don't want to be late. No, it's all right. I got everything ready. Uh, before you go, Raymond, I've got some upsetting news. Brad Winfield may be connected to Gordon Powell. You're wrong. I just left Brad. That's why I'm late. Brad tells me that he's been conducting an independent investigation of Gordon Powell. Yeah, he told me that, too. But he also told me that they were childhood friends. They were. That's why Brad went to see him. Well, what did he see him about? Brad has proof that Gordon Powell and State's Attorney Dalton are connected. He gave them a chance to turn State's evidence. He did what? Are you sure? Powell turned him down. But Brad's going ahead anyway. He's going to expose them both in his television speech tonight. We've been protecting the wrong man. I gotta call Lieutenant Johnson. Gordon Powell's target is Brad Winfield. Are you saying that somebody's gonna kill Brad in my church tonight? Well, we're not sure, but there's a very good possibility. Oh, St. Bridget, help us. The desk sergeant says Lieutenant Johnson and his men have already left for a political rally. Well, they're going to the wrong rally. Yeah, we better get to the church fast. Assassin could blend right in with a television crew. I'll check out the crew. I'm gonna go find Brad. Father, you've come to the right place. In a few minutes, I'm going to make some news tonight. Brad, I found out that Gordon Powell is connected to Dalton. Yeah. Well, tonight, the whole world's going to know. What you don't know is that Powell has hired an assassin. He's going to kill you here tonight. Now, you've got to cancel your speech. Well, I appreciate you warning me, Father. But I can't. He'll kill you. Father, listen to me. The Gordon Powells of the world have had their way long enough. The people that they can't buy off with bribes and favors, they try to scare away with threats. These are my people. This is my community, not Gordon Powells. He won't run me out. Excuse me, I'm on.
away, but you really shouldn't be here. Frank, it's my place to be here. All right, but be careful. Good evening, and welcome to Racine Avenue Baptist Church, which tonight serves as our community center, as well as our spiritual home. Now, these good people seated behind me, including our candidate, Brad Winfield, have come here tonight to ask our involvement in issues vitally important to us all. It's my distinct pleasure to present to you a neighbor and a friend and our candidate for state attorney, Brad Winfield. Powell is behind this. Yes, I know. You do? Well, who do you think was my source? I'll pick up Powell. Powell is going to testify, and he's cleared you of Maurice's killing. But did you really think I did it? I was just mad at you for breaking faith with me. This is my music. I know, son. I know. Play me something hot. <laughs> Good evening. I have a surprise for you all tonight. Lately, I've been playing duets with a very, very talented friend of mine. And tonight, he's going to make his public debut with our trio. You know, I'm very comfortable with you. It's like we've been friends for years. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing this morning. Yeah. I'm going to miss our little talks and your cooking. Well, there's no need. If you want to, you just call up and come over. <laughs> uh, thanks, Marie. It's nice when good friends get closer. I know what you're thinking, but it would never work. Uh, why'd you say that? Well, there's an insurmountable difference. Marie, I can't believe you think that way. Well, I believe in facing facts. You're a deep-water Baptist, and I'm an Irish Roman Catholic. 